Until the rest of well, in a month from now, the Hollywood picture is gonna give you what you want. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Welcome to Inside Your Screen, where we're talking all things Snowpiercer. Uh, we're at episode five, Keep Hope Alive. Uh, Brendan, how you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. Another slow episode this week. Um, the the Cold War is starting to heat up, maybe. What were your thoughts? I, I preferred this week to last week. Um, it had a really nice flow to it. Um, is that because there was more deaths in this one? But, oh, no, not just that. There was just It just flowed really nicely this time. It kind of... And it moved from storyline to storyline really well, where it didn't necessarily spend too long with one character before it went to another kind of sub story to another sub story. Um, and it wasn't up until and but it, so I'll be honest, the flow is really good up until you know the scene with Bess and Bess Till and yeah, the and Pasta, Logan. and they had that kind of uh, sparring scene with the boxing gloves, and I, that just just seemed really weird and out of nowhere for me but then we obviously saw where that went with his kind of preaching and so on and what happened at the end of the episode but i actually i really like this episode i thought um some of the music choices i really like the music in this as well was really cool um oh the radiohead um so last week we had porter's head uh with audrey singing and this week we have radiohead yeah, yeah. was it radiohead uh i believe it was yeah well she was singing uh, okay, and we also had um, I, I forget the name, but we get we had the uh, cause I got high, cause I got high. Uh, yeah. Do, 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 yeah, very a very brief interlude. Yeah, before Pike got whacked over the head. Um, all right, let's well let's go with the overview then. Um, so we start off with Josie. Uh, you know, each episode of Snowpiercer has a kind of intro sequence where you have one of the main characters, uh, or side character or periphery characters, kind of explaining what their kind of role is or what's happening uh today we had josie and she's uh essentially she's yeah. talking about how the trade works and you know how she's there uh basically being a spy uh for leighton and the tailies um and we sh we, we we see, see a jump cut scene where you know the kind of um things are brought from big alice the snow piercer um and although last week's episode was very Audrey centric, uh, we do get a bit more of Audrey this week. Uh, she's another spy, another Leighton spy that's kind of sent in to do some espionage, some James Bond style shenanigans so that the Snowpiercer can hear um, what basically Wilfred's saying when he's just talking in his cabin and everything like that. Um, and while we have some strong character-driven moments, um, it's been clipping along at a reasonable pace. I'm going to have to disagree with you a little bit there, Brendan. I think the kind of the the, the sort of subplots are kind of going a bit, mm, getting a bit out there. We need to kind of rein them in a bit, sort of thing. Like Bess, as you said, was like playing a sour detective. That's not really working for me. I thought that would actually be a really good uh, sort of way into her character a bit more in this series, but so far. She's just been kind of trying to cause fights. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, well, she's 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 conflicted, isn't she? She's you know she's going through. Hence why they've brought in this this preacher character to kind of you know almost like you know to add that is he you know a good guy to her or is he suspicious? And you know they're doing that on purpose. I still um, think he's suspicious as. Oh, totally, totally, totally. Um, Again, it wasn't necessarily the best stuff uh, in this episode that I thought was really, they'd done really well, but it was. It was like we saw um, a lot more of Josie in this episode. We actually saw a lot more of Leighton in this episode. Leighton was back and forth the train nonstop in this episode. Uh, well, I want to get to Leighton in a second, sort of. Yeah, Le uh, the Leighton's a big talking point in this, yeah. so we'll, we'll, we'll do a whole little section just on Leighton. Yeah. But, you know, we saw that the whole concept of Melanie hasn't got back to them, so um, you, yeah. know, you saw all the characters up there discussing and 
and it was really cool to see Ruth as part of that discussion. You know, Ruth is part of the committee now. We saw a lot more of Ruth in this episode. Um, we saw a lot more of um, Zara in this episode. We saw a lot more of Pike in this, this episode, and we had the whole Pike and Terence scenario. Um, we got to see uh, Oz for the first time actually have a conversation with another character. Um, like you said, we got to see a little bit more of, of um, Big Alice as well, where we had um, uh, Alexandra and I forget her friend's name, but the second Australian Amelia. in the world, um, yeah. Amelia. Um, you know, they had their little chat and their little kind of interaction. And like you said, then we, it, I just, it, again, the best, the, 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 the subs plot with Bess wasn't necessarily the best part of this episode. As I said, it was probably the, the weakest point of this episode. But I just liked seeing a lot more of the characters. And as I said, it kind of intertwined. I see Bob. I see Bob has a personality. Yeah. Is, is I see Bob a good guy? Do you know what well, I mean? Like, there we go. Um, I mean, I think we're going to start. I mean, I what I loved about this episode that, that Wilfred has a book club. I thought yeah. that was amazing. <laughs> I just thought that was great. Um, yeah. Sean Bean getting on the radio going, hey, hey, club members, let's get in my car. Let's talk about Rebecca. You know, I mean, the kind of subtext of, you know, what they're talking about, Rebecca, um, the characters, are they really talking about the characters or are they talking about the characters on Big Alice, i.e. Mr. Wilfred and Audrey? Um, I just thought it was really good. Like, I just love the fact that, you know, once every like couple of weeks or once every month he gets these people together and they have like an intense conversation about books. <laughs> I just thought that was amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. So we, we, yeah, you said there, uh, so Josie is in the, um, she's in big Alice. Um, she's being treated by the Headwood doctors and you see her actually change throughout this episode. Whereas she's been like mummified for everything that she's been in with, uh, frost ice burns and stuff like that. You see at the very end that you see a skin kind of coming back. Um, but really, I think once again, this, this episode is more about sort of cold war tactics, Leighton using his spies, i.e. Josie and Miss Audrey, and also Mr. Wilfred, uh, that we learn later on is, is using some members in his, in Snowpiercer, um, which kind of comes along. So yeah. Um, we basically see Josie's sending messages back and forth. Uh, she's suffering from pain and sort of Icy Bob is there to kind of, you know, uh, counteract the pain. He tells her to focus on five red objects while she's having this kind of like pain panic attack. Um, and she does. And then he kind of comes across. He's reading the Rebecca book as well. And, you know, he seems very softly spoken. I think you mentioned before in a previous episode, Brendan, of like Frankenstein's monster. I think yeah. this is the kind of road they're going down, that I see Bob and Josie will share this connection um, and that he will essentially, he's he's a, he's a he's a bad guy, but he's got a heart of gold kind of thing. And maybe yeah. he'll see the, the, the wrongdoings of Wilford and turn against them at a later point or something like that. And, and he really, said, that he said a line to Josie as well, didn't he? About the the doctors. What was it? He said something. Oh, was, yeah, like, like you wouldn't want to. You want to get their bad books, basically. Yeah, don't and that cross. kind of that was actually quite. I, I noticed that because I did think they're like, oh, so far we've seen the light-hearted side of the Headwoods, but that kind of whole crazy doctor, that crazy sort of scientist, kind of hasn't come out yet, and I think it will. Uh, yeah, I do think it will come out later on obviously that's massively hinting towards you know them having a dark side so because yeah, right. you're spot on so far they've been in like almost comedy characters it's all about humor and being silly there's been levity yeah to their to their kind of set but in this episode i think was the kind of turning point where oh maybe they're you know they're crazy scientists but they're gonna have some kind of tricks up their sleeves i think um, later on as well, we find out, so, um, yeah, uh, Leighton sends Miss Audrey, well, Wilfred asks for her, uh, pleasure of her company, essentially, on, on Big Alice, and Leighton's asking her, you know, you're gonna go in there unprotected, are you okay? If you do go in there, though, uh, there's a box that you can open with this little kind of, uh, handle, and, uh, if you change these wires, we'll be able to hear everything that Mr. Wilfred says. She's happy to do it, um... And that's the main, I think that's the main kind of power play that Leighton's doing here. What do you think about that, Brendan? 
Uh, it was a good idea. Good idea. But obviously, you instantly just think, how is she going to do it? Obviously, you know, that's the whole point is it's the dramatic. But it's like... There was that tension mm. sort of moment where, you know, she's sort of sipping wine. Or no, actually, they're having meal. And she asks for an aperitif. And he goes out. And then she goes to the box. Excruciatingly slowly trying to open the box while he's going to the fridge and getting out the aperitifs. Like, uh, did she really think, like... You know, she could get like it's a train. They're not that far. <laughs> up, you know, it's not. It's all very, about the tension, Brendan. It's all about the tension. Uh, it's totally. But I did. You know, I understand. It's, it was just a bit far fetched that she thought she could kind of get away with it in that scenario, or she that was her attempt at trying to get away with it. Oh, get me a drink now. Let me try and unlock this box, and she's pretty clearly pretty crap at, at using a lockpick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I mean, it's. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting to kind of see because as I said, like this is where once again I disagree because there's so many little subplots going on. So we have like um, we have Pike who's essentially still doing his weed dealing on um, between Big Alice and um, Snowpiercer, but Terence the uh, he was a janitor. Now he's like some kind. Of, like, I mean, in the first series, it was it was well established that he was like some kind of I don't know um, black sort of dealing. Wise black market. black market sort of guy. Yeah, he was the dealer man. He was the guy who you know was an chrono. He, he was the guy who got the yeah. Chrono. And he's trying to ascertain his authority over Pike because he knows he's, Pike's dealing. Run it. Even though he was the janitor, he still had to do the janitor's work. He still pretty much run the third class. That's and yeah. he run the, the he was the guy the the go to guy. Yeah. So Pike gets whacked over the head by LJ with this kind of like lead pipe kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, Leighton has to staple his skull back together, which I thought was quite a funny uh, incident there. Um, but yeah, Pike's character does come out a little bit more, but I think it was only because of the fact that Leighton asked him to essentially off Terence. Yeah, uh, and and it was it, it's a kind of heartfelt moment where Pike's saying like, you know, I you you know you stood up for me when I was on trial for cannibalism. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you, Leighton. I, I swore to myself that I would never kill unless in combat and you're asking me to do this thing. I thought that was all very well and good, but this it just seemed very, once again, shoehorned in. I feel like in this series, there's a lot of shoehorned in stuff that's going on just to kind of appease the matter, like, you know, this character's going to do this. And I did love the fact that when Terence did go to, um, you know, end Terence's life, uh, sorry, when Pike went to end Terence's life, he would, there was like an honour honorable way of doing it it was like he threw him a knife and said i've got to do this fair i've got to do this in combat um and that was that was quite a nice little caveat of the character i mean in the end you know he needed him to be silent so he used like a glue gun on him or whatever sort of thing and uh you know that went that way um but yeah no um that was one of the kind of points of the sort of subplots and then you had like obviously bess's still investigation of the the uh mutilation of the tailies that you know leads her back to the breachman. Um, the breachman uh, gives her like a drink, and she just pours it on the floor. And that's where Pastor Logan gets in. They go for a sparring yeah, session. Yeah, to be fair, to be fair, she didn't really. This this episode, Bess wasn't investigating them at all. They didn't she wasn't show really her doing anything. This episode, well, they, she just, they just there for like just, narrative plot lines. No, remember the whole point was was it was like take a day off. So it was yeah, like they said, she's start become burnt out and, already. Like she's then, only been a trained detective for yeah. like two minutes. And then they cut to her, and she was at the bar having a drink. Yeah, with Oz. So that's kind of they didn't really go into the investigation side. They just kind of had the. She did have the scene with the, the breachman and her kind of pouring away the drink that they bought her. Um, yeah, and then we had um, Rocky Three. <laughs> Whilst being given sort of religious sermons about yeah. how you know humanity, <laughs> humanity is not its best, and every punch he gives her is like a kind of uh, a sermon from the gods smiting her down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, I, I I personally feel that Pastor Logan is the 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 sneaky sneak behind all these things that are happening in on, on Mister Wilfred's kind of favor. To be honest. Um, and let's let's talk about that for a second. So, essentially, what happens? Uh, Audrey goes over to the uh, Big Alice. Um, she's having this kind of meal with Mister Wilfred, and in between that going on, uh, Josie finds out that um, he's planning to actually do some kind of attack on Snowpiercer to regain control. Um, she basically forgoes her sedative medication 
from the Hartwood doctors. Um, so she's essentially awake while they're operating on her, while they're peeling back some more skin. But she gets to overhear them, uh, their gossip, essentially. And she knows that Wilfred is going to uh, attempt something with the breachman. So she sends her little her little note. And um, Leighton gets it. And you think it's the breachman. So Wilfred's guys are the breachman. All the time. But no, apparently they are slain, essentially. They're the target. They are the targets. So I kind of think that past Logan has a kind of a cotylite. He has his little cult members, maybe, that are pro Wilford, and they're going to be like a new sect that comes out. That's my that's my theory. Well, anyway. well, they've they've come out, haven't they? They killed all the, the well, so yeah, all the breachmen. So they're all breachmen, just, uh, yeah. bar one, bar Bochevik sort of thing. He's still there. They're definitely so. trying to suggest that it's the the um, the pastor who's kind of Wilford's inside man. Who's do you think that's a red herring then? Do you yeah, think I I still think that is a red herring with him. I think it's going to be someone else. Um, do you think it could be Ruth? I don't know at the moment because there were so many of them that attacked the 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 breakman the breachman so instantly i was kind of like well there's loads of murderers here and there's loads of characters so obviously these have some of these are going to have to be not they have to be new characters or probably people who aren't even characters they're just you know wilford sect member one sect member you know um so yeah there's i i think it's a bit of a red herring that he's in charge of them but obviously wilford has you know he's infiltrated Snowpiercer. He's got his his teams. He's getting messages to Snowpiercer because they organised it. They were able to coordinate it. Um, so Wilford is getting information across the border as well. Um, however, he's doing it. Uh, so yeah, I, I liked that at the end. I thought that was a nice little um, twist and reveal. Uh, with yeah, you know, I mean, it, just, definitely... just, it was you know an act of war, so to speak. It definitely reinforces the kind of point that there are two sides now. There's Wilfred's crew and there's Leighton's crew. And Leighton's been more, uh, he's using more subterfuge techniques um, to get information, whereas Wilfred is just using his blunt force, you know, uh, appeal of like him being the kind of engineer or the, the, the owner of the train sort of thing to appeal to certain perhaps tailies or certain perhaps people in the first class and whatnot. Um, yeah, it, I mean, I think personally, this episode really is trying to hit home the side that maybe Leighton is becoming the villain. Well, it the, in Leighton's regard into this episode, it definitely is kind of like it's a focus on, you know, the struggles of trying to be a leader, trying to do everything right, trying to do this. But in this episode, I know we said, let's, let's just get on to Leighton right now. He made some really, like, really stupid decisions in this episode. I would say questionable decisions. No. I would say stupid. stupid. What do you mean by stupid? Explain your right. stupid decisions. Right. Nice and basic. Leighton is kind of your leader of Snowpiercer, correct? Mm -hmm. He's the head of Snowpiercer. Leighton goes to... So, to start with, here's my first issue. is And, and they show it twice, I think, in the episode the whole getting the messages across the border is a little bit blatantly obvious where every single person can see it. Terrence, <laughs> Terrence worked yeah. it out. Ruth worked it out. I mean, if you've got the kid and Leighton at the border, every single trade, and then the kid Leighton hands something to the kid and the kid goes running off, it's kind of clear what's going on or, you know. It's... I did love that. I thought that was pretty interesting where the guy who brings the trolley on just like li literally set, like gives him the sample, the vial. Yeah. And he just like, he, he, he what, what? everyone's probably looking at him just opens it up and reads it it's like oh okay yeah it's like what even ruth like ruth there was i think there was twice in this episode where ruth used the line like i'm not naive you know i can see what's going on <laughs> i know exactly what's well, happening she reads all the communication going back and forth anyway so but yeah but not these notes obviously she didn't know that so first off he's blatant his his ploy to get the information across the border is really blatantly obvious second one was after pike's attack right, it's nice and simple he actually goes to terence and he says terence let's do 60 40 either accept the deal or here's a, a file with all the crimes that you've been i'll, I'll arrest you Right. And Terence is like, no, fuck you. I know about Josie. I know your 
to Terence to try to play the blackmail card, right? Yeah. And then we kind of cut to a conversation with Leighton and Zara, and Zara's like, you've got to sort this out. You've got to sort this out. Why didn't he just arrest him? Well, that's where I Roach, think this Roach, is... who's in charge of the police force, is aware that they're communicating across the the border. So it's not like he's breaking any rules, you know. The people who need to know, know. So Leighton, by doing that, isn't actually breaking any rules as such of the train. So why didn't... Let's just simple as... Yeah, because uh, I Roach, think this is the whole point, because Roach, I think they're setting him up to your, be the villain. Roach, you and your coppers go and arrest him. So that's stupid decision number one. Stupid decision number two is just that. Why kid him? Why kid him? You know he was threatening because he knew that if he if if Terence gave away the information that Josie was the spy. Yeah, but how can Terence do that if he's arrested in a cell? It's Snowpiercer, man. If you can get like little information from one train to another, I'm sure he'd be able to send his little birds out and get the information from, through from from a, from an isolated cell. Well, I, the thing was that I took away from that is that it was Zara. Have, you, actually... not, have you have you not? It was Zara who can kind of convinced. Yeah, there was like this late... almost Shakespearean sort of like. And did you notice later on as well that she has her she has a little mouth in everyone's ear. She's in Ruth's ear. She's in Layton's ear. I think she's been set up to be. She could well be the. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if this is a red herring or not, but she could be the kind of. Wilford's, I don't know why or how, but she, you know, she was basically, she, she was sneaky. a villain character in the first series. She was and now she's been made out to be like this kind of, oh, let's I'm hospitality not, now, da da da, yeah, but she's just let's not working forget, away. Let's not forget, she was, she was very close to killing Josie. Exactly. She's like, Fuck, I found Josie, I'm going to kill her now. And, she, you know, she, what did she whisper into her ear? Like, don't mess with my family or something like that. Yeah. Zara's definitely a little bit, she's got this definitely something going on. Maybe, so, that, but you that, could be right. Like Leighton may have just arrested him, but it was Zara. It was like you know she's threatening us. She's threatening our family. You you need to take action. You need to kind of there's as I said once again, it's almost this Shakespearean Macbeth style sort of play going on here, where I think Leighton's been, in all honesty, I think he's been led up. He's been set up to be this kind of tragic hero character in the second series. I think he will become the villain because another thing as well is the, is the lie. Um, so essentially, uh, another weather balloon goes up, but Melanie doesn't make contact, and all the kind of key players are in Snowpiercer's engineering ward, and they're so they're saying like, you know, we haven't made contact with Melanie. What do we tell the people? And they effectively lie. They turn around and say like, well, we have made contact, and it's kind of going back into the. the that wasn't really where... a late decision though. That was late. That was very much a democracy in that room. Mm, but still, I mean, he. No, still, uh, that I was... think this is once again like just another thing to kind of like. No, as you said, no like... that I, I get. Me, I agree with you. I agree with you. They are trying to push Leighton, and the decisions that Leighton are making are pushing him towards the dark side of possibly being the bad guy. And and you know, let's be. But he didn't need to kill Terence. That was over the top. That was a stupid decision. You know, like you said, if Terence was, if he was worried about Terence being arrested and Terence's people getting information or whatever. What are Terence's people going to do now that he's dead? The, the the people who Terence paid, the people who did Terence's dirty work for him, they're going to want revenge now. Whereas had Terence just been arrested for the crimes, yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I would like to think that that would be explored, but I think there's so many subplots going on now that that won't be. Yeah, I think that what that I think that in general is just a, exactly that is. We're going to see Leighton go down this dark path. He's already, and, and maybe, like you said, they very much did play into this Zara. Like like you said, that scene where Zara was like telling Leighton, you, you know, you've got to do something. It was almost like it was a, a voiceover, wasn't it? It was kind mm. of, so I think you're right. It possibly is that this kind of Zara's, you know, whispering into Leighton's ear and making him do things he maybe wouldn't normally do. Um, but yeah, his decision making in this episode was just poor, poor. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then at the end we have, of course, so uh, Wilfred's, I don't know, crew are basically going out slaying the breachman. Alarm goes off, and Audrey is at the uh, border, and Ruth is there, and uh, Audrey I... decides to stay. Um, now, I see this as a kind of like she wouldn't, she wouldn't go because then she would lose. Wilfred's trust 
I don't see this as a kind of like, oh, she's staying on Big Alice because you know she wants to. No, she's it's... stupid again, and I think you go. I guarantee you, the the very next episode, we're gonna see one of the early scenes in the episode is Miss Audrey and and uh, Mister Wilford asleep, and her sneaking out of bed to try and do the wire thing, and him catching her. Because mm, he, he did see the yeah he, saw he the knows box. and he yeah. checked the box so so yeah. I don't know how you read into Sean Bean's playing of that but I read into he's fully on to what she's doing oh yeah yeah definitely like he knows what she's up like she was doing something he doesn't maybe know what but like she was doing something with the box yeah. what questions have you got for this episode Brendan um, what's going on with Melanie. So obviously that's a, a bit of a I question. I think we find out next episode. I'm not sure if the whole episode is going to be Melanie centric, but um, I have seen uh, the trailer for the next episode, and it's definitely, yeah, Melanie's in it. Okay, so there are the questions that have arisen from yeah, what's going on with Melanie? What are these doctors up to? Yeah, and you know what's this evil side that um, Icy Bob is referring to, uh, and. What the fuck is Leighton playing at? Like, just what's he doing? Like, is again. So I want to, you know, let's let's see. What's the old Batman phrase of the Dark Knight? You live long enough to see a good guy, you become a bad guy. What's the what's the thing there? I think I think that's essentially what they're setting it up for. I think you know the whole point with season one with uh, Melanie keeping this lie that Wilfred was alive for seven years. Um, is basically now he's kind of taking over her mantle in the respect that these little white lies that are coming out of the crevices are going to start turning into big lies. And then, you know, he's making these decisions where it's like, and now we're we're killing people and everything like that. I think the whole Terrence thing, in all honesty, was a bit of a shock tactic to kind of show that he's kind of like this Godfather style capable of doing these things. Um whether there'll be something else in the future to cement that probably uh, yeah yeah definitely you I know mean, yeah we're definitely going to see late and making some more questionable decisions yeah. so so just... i think yeah so questions on my side exactly what you were saying there um is audrey prepared to go further down the rabbit hole i think she's playing a game i don't think she actually wants to stay with you know wilfred i think she's just there to do the job and then sort of try and you know get back or something but i think she's i think she's really in in deep in too deep probably in over her head essentially um and uh yeah i kind of want to find out really what the heartwoods are up to um josie seems to be getting better like you can see her skin returning her, her closed yep. eye that was always closed is now open again her skin's getting better so we'll we're not going to see a fully recovered uh, Josie from like the first series. That would be that would be ludicrous. That would be ludicrous. Is it going to happen, Brendan? Um, yeah, pro probably not. I think she'll probably have a more icy Bob type look. But yeah. you know, you but, never um, know. I, I kind of want the Cold War to end now. Um, I think the chess pieces have been moved around. I think you know we've been seeing too many subplots. I kind of not in. Re it doesn't need to be like action packed, but it we I, I need to see some kind of coherence to things now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think you're. No, I think we. I mean, we. If I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm assuming this season is going to be 10 episodes the same as the last one. So we're only halfway through. So no, I don't think um, we're anywhere near the end of the war. I mean, let's be blunt. We they had ceasefire. So kind of last, uh, this week's episode was the kind of almost, um, you know, the the breach of ceasefire, so to speak. So the, you know, the first act of the new part of the war. Um, so yeah, it's just begun. And obviously they're, they're in the, it's a secret army, it's a hidden army. So. Uh, Fighting in the shadows, that's what all the Cold War's about. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, well, um, yeah, Brennan, sign us out and uh, join us uh, for the next episode of Snowpiercer, episode six, where I think we'll be seeing a bit of Melanie. I think we will. Guys, if you want to uh, listen to any of our stuff, your first port call is YouTube. Just search inside your screen on YouTube. We've got all our podcasts there. We've got loads of videos on there. Tony does 
loads of brilliant independent horror game reviews and just independent game reviews loads of film reviews up there so it's all there if you want to check it out on youtube if you just want to listen to our stuff via audio where you can download it we're on all the major podcast platforms we're on itunes spotify soundcloud anywhere where you can get a podcast we are there again just search inside your screen and if you want to get in contact with us give us some feedback let us know what you thought let us know what you're thinking about Snowpiercer, or whatever it may be. We're on Twitter at Inside Your Screen. This time it's with a UR, so Inside UR Screen. Uh, get in contact because we'd love to hear feedback and we'd love to spread the love. Inside Your Screen.